We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello, I'm Andrea McDonald, the founder of Idea Me. Who are you? I'm Stella Sola. I lead Australia's National AI Centre. I've been in this role for about a year and a half. And before that, I was with Microsoft for 10 years. And prior to that, uh, across various startups and IT distributors for about five years. But for me, my technology journey was a complete accident. My high school education and primary school education, I was really into music. And in fact, I was on this track to become a film composer and I was playing cello and piano. And this was the career of choice for me. Uh, and then through university, I was studying commerce and arts. And it was really about film, theater and philosophy. And on the commerce side, it was economics and international business. And it was a bit of a negotiation. I did commerce for my parents and I did arts for my love. Um, and so when I finished university, I needed to get a job. And the first job that came my way was in technology. And so nothing before that point pointed me uh, or suggested that I was going to be in a technology career, you know, arts, uh, creative space, music, uh, commerce, economics. And then suddenly, first role in tech, uh, I started off in inside sales. And I learned very quickly just how creative technology was. It was that creativity that I never knew existed in technology. And uh, I just learned on the job. I completed short courses, learned on um, in customer engagements. And that's the history ever since. Currently at the National AI Center, it's hosted by CSIRO, which is Australia's national science agency. And so we have a mission to accelerate positive adoption of AI across Australia. And that country level mission is unlike anything I've um, been working towards before. My previous roles, uh, for instance, at Microsoft, um, they span across Internet of Things, um, on the sales strategy side, artificial intelligence on solution sales um, leadership kind of function. I was also in various product marketing and partnership roles, business development roles. And so there was always um, an, an objective about attaining uh, numbers or outcomes. And now in this role, looking at this country level activation, it's a, it's a next level of impact. Could you please uh, define artificial intelligence and its applications? There is a lot of debate about what the definition is of artificial intelligence. In fact, um, the EU Joint Research Centre has, I think, a 150-page document uh, collating various definitions of AI. The one that I really appreciate is about AI being a broad category of technologies um, and ultimately AI being a technology that you can train to do a specific thing. And then it can do that thing incredibly well at scale. Um, I appreciate that one because it's more practical for businesses to really get a handle on how to leverage AI within their organization. You know, it talks about this ability for a technology to be trained to do a specific thing and then do it at a scale that otherwise may not be possible. Could you please talk of the challenges and opportunities of AI? I mean, it's such a huge area, uh, trying to explore the challenges and opportunities of AI. Um, ultimately, for me, because AI can tackle scale and complexity and volume so incredibly well, um, I see it as being able to uplift our impact as a society, as a humanity, um, and uplift our industry impact all around the world. Uh, there are some tremendous benefits of being able to provide services to remote communities, for instance, who may not have access to services otherwise um, that, that AI could contribute, um, you know, whether that be through translation of materials or through um, creating AI models that are specialized at certain, uh, let's say, health health tracking or health diagnostics that might be difficult to attain. But it's this ability to scale positive services for our communities that I think holds a true, true opportunity. There are also some risks that we're navigating. And um, uh, one example is underlying data biases. 
you know, throughout history, um, and all of our data comes from history by default. Uh, so throughout history, we've had inequities, gaps in data, underrepresentation. And so when we build AI models that rely on the underlying data, sometimes we can propagate latent biases that we may not even be aware of. So I see um, elements such as diversity, um, being able to intercept how AI systems are designed so that we actually shape AI systems towards better outcomes, doing better as a society, rather than replicating some of the biases of the past. Sam Altman launched uh, GBT4 in March this year. And um, it, whilst it wasn't met with as much pub publicity as um, chat GBT, the, the first iteration, could you um, talk of the latest version and uh, the question of alignment? So actually, this entire area of chatbots has been a really pivotal moment to AI adoption and AI understanding around the world. Um, having been in the AI space um, for some time, I quite often get the question of terminators. You know, are terminators going to take over the world? And so finally, with the chatbot technologies that have been released, and there are now uh, quite a number of vendors who have um, versions of them, it has enrich the conversation you know the community broad communities now engaging with generative ai technologies whether they be language models or image generators um, there is more access to get hands-on with the technology to start ideating real use cases real benefits and also very real challenges that we're navigating and so for me this entire arena of uh, chatbots of generative AI that has just exploded in usage over the last couple of months has been a critical pivot point for community to get more engaged in the shaping of AI towards responsible and meaningful outcomes. Could you talk of the nuts and bolts of what you have been doing in the last year at the National AI Centre, including the three think tanks, and also uh, the world first that you have launched. At the National AI Center, we've been very busy over the past year. So we've been in operation uh, since January last year. And um, for us, we started off with a national listening tour. So we went all around the country. We visited 135 different organizations around Australia to really understand what were the real experiences and needs from Australia's industry, from community, and from the broader AI ecosystem. And that informed much of what we have designed today, including the establishment of the think tanks and the recent announcement of the Responsible AI Network. So we have three core pillars to what we're establishing. The first one is to help Australia's business get started with AI. We find that a lot of larger organizations are already on their AI journey, but quite often the small and medium businesses are being left behind. Um, in fact, larger businesses are twice as likely to be benefiting from AI than what small and medium businesses are. And about 60%, 65% of uh, businesses in Australia in that SME category are asking just how to get started with AI. And so that is all about our first pillar. It's to get started. It's foundational knowledge and skills to enable businesses to take those early AI steps. The next pillar for us is get connected. And what we noticed during the listening tour is that the tremendous strength that Australia has in research uh, for AI and AI technology development was by and large unknown by industry. You know, industry didn't know that we have world leading field robotics so that Australia is world leading in computer vision or that we have over 20 years of quantum AI um, work that, that is done. And so we are bridging that gap through the launch of the ecosystem discoverability portal and um, then set of matchmaking and connection um, events that are going to be moving ahead. And then the third pillar for us is about uplifting practice. Uh, we know that right now AI holds a lot of opportunity if we navigate this opportunity responsibly. 
And many organizations um, around Australia and in fact around the world are asking how to do AI in a responsible way, in a robust, reliable, trustworthy way. But there is not really comprehensive guidance on how to do this. Um, and so we established the Responsible AI Network, which is a, a gateway for industry to gain expert advice and best practice on how to do AI well across their organization. And there isn't just one organization that has all the answers towards this. So we partnered with uh, nine different organizations around Australia, including the um, Australian Industry Association, the Australian Information Industry Association as well, the Tech Council of Australia, our um, uh, Committee for Economic Development, uh, also Standards Australia, the Ethics Centre, um, obviously CSIRO's Data61 and the Gradient Institute. Uh, there's quite an array of partnerships who have come together so that we can fill in the various uh, bodies of knowledge um, and expert guidance that are needed to ensure that AI is um, navigated responsibly across the organization. In fact, there are uh, six core pillars that we're focused on as part of the Responsible AI Network. Um, the first one is obviously leadership. We are finding that AI is only as good as we lead it. And it's because AI ultimately is a tool, a technology that we're using to achieve the outcomes that we want to achieve. Um, so leadership is that pivotal foundational one. Governance is another one. Law and standards as well, especially with a wave of standards that is about to come uh, from the ISO um, organization. We also um, then focus on technology and principles as well. So we're breaking down Responsible AI into those six core pillars. Um, and the way that we maintain the pulse of what industry needs, what community needs, and ensure that we're responding in an agile way is through the establishment of our three think tanks. So the three think tanks have 57 members that represent um, industry, academia, government, and community organizations. And we meet every month uh, to uh, talk about what is needed, where are the gaps, and actually scope the next projects and programs that we invest in. Um, and there are three of those think tanks. We have one for responsible AI, another one for diversity and inclusion in AI, and a third one for AI at scale. You have um, mentioned that this, well, it is a world first to, to build such an ecosystem. Um, as AI, you, you sit within AI and the context of AI, AI is, of course, global. Um, I was just interested to hear the extent to which you're reaching out globally to involve other entities, other countries, other organizations in your world first. So the Responsible AI Network is a world first because it's taking an all of ecosystem approach. We have seen other countries form Responsible AI partnerships, you know, within the country, uh, but this is a very different way of approaching. It's bringing together various subject matter experts to create a fabric of sorts across Australia to uplift practice. We started off with an announcement in Australia of our partners, but we are already talking internationally with, with partners so that we can collaborate. Our core intention here is to bring along industry on this AI journey. It's to uplift the practice. We know that AI is a huge opportunity for industry. No one wants to get it wrong, but at the same time, businesses are finding that there are gaps in guidance on how to do AI well. So we are looking for partners around the world to help us fill this gap on industry guidance and then proactively land it in uh, across um, the industry ecosystem. Is your plan ultimately to establish a set of um, standards, rules, to, or to be a, a leader in that respect? Actually, there are so many organizations already either um, creating guidance or frameworks um, and, you know, mentioning standards. There is already uh, a huge wave of standards out and another huge wave that's coming um, from ISO when it comes to AI. What we're trying to do is to simplify this experience and also commission 
net new areas of development that will help businesses fill the gaps of how to do AI responsibly. Um, there are many organizations who are publishing frameworks and guidance, but no business is going to be going hunting around for all of those different frameworks and how they all fit in. So we see our role uh, partially as curation, as centralization and simplification, and then commissioning uh, for guidance frameworks and best practices to fill the gaps. And there are definitely gaps that we're finding. Do you think there is any chance of an agreed global charter for AI? It is a big question. I don't have the answer to. Um, I was fascinated to see the uh, the open letter that was um, that was recently published, and you know I don't know how practical or reasonable um, the suggestion of, of a pause is, but what it really does spotlight is the need to go deeper into responsible AI, the need to reflect as a society around the world. Um, in terms of how we want to shape AI, what we want to use it for, what kind of guidance, best practices, frameworks we want to put in place. Uh, so it's put that into spotlight, I think, in a way that we have not seen before. Um, and it was probably generated by the generative AI wave. You know, this engaged such a high volume of people that this question is an imperative question for our time. What do we want to see from AI? How do we want to shape AI and how do we see it as part of our lives? We welcome everyone to follow us on our LinkedIn channel. We just launched this uh, a couple of weeks ago and we'll be amplifying some of the latest um, announcements and, and projects that we have, as well as some of Australia's AI ecosystem. Um, you're also welcome to reach out to us through our website. It's csiro.au forward slash N-A-I-C. Stella Sola. Thank you very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. My pleasure. Thanks for the chat. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.